Karaganda received city status in 1934, but the events that led to its emergence began to occur much earlier and the first of them was in 1833 when the shepherd Apik Bays Hanab discovered scatterings of black stones near one of the marmot holes that were burning well. This happened in the Karaganda Basi tract, 25 km south of the Nora River on the territory of the present Severnaya Mine, a coal mine in Yuzinka, a street in the village of Koryanovsky, beyond Makutuk, is named in honor of Apik Bays Hanag. And also in 1999, a well-known monument was erected in front of the regional museum at the intersection of Urabayeva and Loboda streets. And also a fact not known to everyone, Nurkan Abdirov Avenue until 1967 also bore the name of Epic Bay's Hanuk. Residents of the surrounding villages used this coal to heat their homes, but by and large, at first, Bays Hanov's discovery did not lead to any significant changes in the life of the region until the Petro-Pavlovsk merchant of the Second Guild Nikon Abramovich Ushakov appeared on the horizon. So, in April 1846, Ashakov received a permit for the right to prospect and develop various ores and metals in western Siberia and in the Kyrgyz districts, that is, on our territory. In July of the following 1847, Ashakov, together with an expedition from Petropavlovsk, arrived in the area of present-day Karaganda, and his first application was for the Saran coal mine along the Sakhar River. He also finds a rich deposit to the south in the Nell Tract. That mine is still preserved. The Uspensky Copper Mine, which got its name from the village of Uspenskaya. In 1848, Ashakov acquired the Nell Tract and the Saran coal mines in his name. On the territory of central Kazakhstan and present-day Karaganda in particular, people have lived since time immemorial. Here were the lands of the Middle Zuz, which were mainly represented by the Arn family. Most of the population was concentrated in Karkarli and other districts. Basically, the local population, Kazakhs, were engaged in cattle breeding, led a nomadic lifestyle, a small percentage of them were engaged in agriculture, and this has been the case since ancient times and the first resettlement settlements on the territory of present-day Karaganda and its surroundings appeared at the beginning of the 20th century, after the revolutionary events of 1905 and in 1908, settlers from Rostov-on-Don arrived in Kazakhstan. This is how Rostovka appeared. The village of Zelenobalka was founded by settlers from the Poltava province. Also in 1906-1907, the large Mikhailovka, Dubovka, Fedrovka, Old Tikhanovka, and Azinka appeared. At the same time, the villages of Priabrzhensky, Romanovsky, Rozdostvensky, Chernigovsky, Kiv, Ivanovsky, Petrovsky, Sanikova, Current Patakara, Dolinka and many others arose, founded by Ukrainian, Russian, German, Estonian and other settlers. Basically, peasants settled along the banks of the rivers Nora and Bukpa, where they could engage in farming. However, those who found themselves near Karaganda often went to work in the mines, which at that time were run by the French, then by the British before the revolution. And after the revolution in an already new country under a new government, events began to happen in a new way and the scale of these events was also new and hitherto unprecedented. In 1920, a geological expedition led by Alexander Gapiev established that the reserves of Karaganda coal are sufficient to create a fuel base here for the development of metallurgy not only in central Kazakhstan but also in the southern Urals and other regions. And here we come to 1930, when large-scale construction of the city begins on the territory of the Karaganda coal basin. Construction began with order number one from the head of the Kazakh Stroyugal Trust, Korni Osipovich Gorbachev, which sounded like this. To establish the production of adobe and the development of stone for the construction of railway-type residential buildings, the order stated the construction of approximately 20 houses. But in order to carry out our plans, that is, to lay mines, build factories, and establish infrastructure, tens of thousands of workers were needed, which were not available in Karaganda. 
in 1930, by decree of Stalin, a life and death war was declared on the Kulak. A wave of dispossession swept across the country, who were called Kulaks, wealthy peasants who could and knew how to work, who did not see any benefit for themselves from joining a collective farm and were wary of the idea of collectivization. And from such people a whole class was formed that had to be wiped off the face of the earth. Their property, work equipment, and food were confiscated, from which the material base for future collective farms was then compiled, and the Kulaks themselves and members of their families were sent outside the republic. Thus, according to some data, in Karaganda and the Karaganda region there were about half a million peasants from central Russia, the Volga region, Ukraine, Orenburg, Cuban and other regions of the country, due to whom the problem of labor shortage was solved.